Hi guys, today we're going to work on this super cute ladybug cake topper tutorial, so let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I'm starting out with a half sphere of Rice Krispie Treats, and these are just Rice Krispie Treats that I bought at the store, there's nothing special about them, and I just formed them into a half sphere by smushing them together. So now what I'm doing is applying a very, very thin layer of shortening to the outside of my Rice Krispies. You don't have to use shortening, you can use royal icing, you can use butter. Um, I just find that shortening is the most convenient and it's also the most cost effective because most of the time people aren't eating your figurines. And even if they are, they don't usually notice a very thin layer of shortening because it does actually absorb into the fondant a little bit. So just go ahead and make sure that you have the entire thing covered. The reason that you're putting the shortening on is one, to kind of fill in any of the little cavities that you may have so you don't have as many bumps in your fondant and also so that your fondant will stick to it. So go ahead and roll out some black fondant and then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put it on the bottom of your ladybug. Now you don't have to do the bottom but I like to because I feel like it makes your piece more complete and when people get it in the mail they're not like oh here's visible Rice Krispies. So go ahead and smooth that out. Use your fingers to smooth out the edges up onto the side of your ladybug. You won't see them after you cover the rest of it in black. It's just trying to make sure that it's adhered entirely to the bottom. So now we're going to go ahead and take our black fauna and we're going to cover our half sphere. So just go ahead and cover it like you would a normal fondant cake. Smooth out your fondant, make sure there's no air bubbles. And then once you're satisfied with your fondant, go ahead and cut off the excess with an X-Acto knife. And it is okay to leave a tiny, tiny bit edge just so that you can fold it under. As you can see, I turn my piece over and I fold the edges underneath, making sure that it's completely sealed, that you're not going to see any Rice Krispies anywhere. Now this fondant does not have any Tylos in it, and I made sure to not put any in it because I wanted to be able to smooth out the ladybug as best as I possibly could. Now you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your Dresden tool and you're just going to go ahead and create a bunch of lines. This is basically creating all the segments on the ladybug back and you don't need to you know, measure out where you're putting your lines, just a bunch of random horizontal lines across the ladybug's back. And as you can see my lines are getting smaller, that's because Towards the ladybug head, you're not going to see those lines, but towards the back, the wings open up a little bit more, so you are going to need longer lines towards your, the back of your bug. So now we're going to go ahead and take our red filled fondant that we've rolled out, nice and thin, and we're going to cut it in half as you just saw me do. And those are going to be your wings. So go ahead and put a little bit of Tylos glue on the back of your red, and then you're going to go ahead and take the sharp cut line, and you're going to put that over maybe about a third of your ladybug. Now you want to make sure that in the front of your ladybug your wings come about half, halfway to the middle. Now you also want to make sure that at the back of your ladybug the wings are coming out further than halfway because you don't want the wings to be together at the end. So just go ahead and smooth out your fondant over the top of that black ball as best you can and then you're going to go ahead and cut off the excess with your X-Acto knife. So once you have your first wing, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the second side. And you don't need too much Tylos glue. For the most part, these wings should stick. And then as you can see, I line it up with the front 
and then I form it around the side. Making sure that that back part of the ladybug does have that open space. And then go ahead and cut off the excess with your X-Acto blade. And again, same as before, you can have a little bit of an edge to your wings. Just go ahead and fold that underneath your ladybug. Nobody's going to see the underneath. It just makes it look a lot nicer. So now we're going to go ahead and cut out our spots. So I rolled out my black fawn knot very thin and I'm just cutting out a bunch of little circles. Now once you have all your circles cut out, we're going to go ahead and start attaching them to our ladybug with some Tylos glue. You really don't need that much, you only need a tiny dot. And just go ahead and put Tylos glue wherever you want your spots. I like to make them a little bit random, I like to make sure that they don't look exactly the same on both sides. And just go ahead and make sure that all the edges of your dots are pushed down. You don't want to go back later and see that one little edge is sticking up.
So now we're going to go ahead and create the head and for this I'm using black fondant with Tylos added. I added Tylos to this because when I roll out the head I want to make sure that it stays the shape that I made it. So go ahead and roll out a ball and then you're just going to roll it into a little bit of a cylinder. Now once you have that cylinder shape just go ahead and flatten that cylinder out with your palm making sure to keep the general shape. And you're going to go ahead and take a toothpick, put a little bit of Tylos glue on it, and insert it into your ladybug body where you want your head to be. Make sure not to push the toothpick in too far because if you do, you will lose the toothpick inside the body. Then go ahead and take your ball tool and you're going to go ahead and create the eye sockets. And I always start with the left side first because it's easier to match up the right side if you do the left side first. Now once you have your eyes, you're going to go ahead and use the smaller ball tool and create a little tiny hole for your nose. And then you're going to go ahead and take your Dresden tool and create the outline of your mouth. You want to make sure that you're not pressing too lightly. You want to make sure that that mouth is very distinctive. And then I just go ahead and I take one of my sugar shapers. It is the round U-shaped one. And then I just go ahead and press it onto both sides of the mouth. That just gives you a little bit of that smile, that dimpled look. And then once you have all that completed, you're gonna go ahead and start adding the whites of your eyes. Now, it's really important to make sure that before you start adding on your eyes, you wipe your hands off because once you've used the black, you're going to discolor your white fondant if you don't wipe your hands. Now your white eyeballs, you're going to make little spheres and then just like your head, you're going to turn them into little ovals, flatten them out just a little bit, and then go ahead and stick them right into the little eye sockets you've created. You want them to remain oval shaped. It just gives it a little bit more of an added cuteness factor in the end. And then you're going to go ahead and take a little bit of red fauna and create your nose. Same as your eyes, you just want to create a little sphere and then flatten it into a little oval. Making sure to adhere it using a little tiny bit of Tylos glue. You want to make sure that you don't use too much because if you use too much it will squirt out the sides. Now once you have your nose on there, you're going to go ahead and create your pupils for your eyes. You're just going to use a little bit of black fondant and same as before, you're just going to roll a little sphere and then stick it to your eye. Depending on how sticky your fondant is, you might not need any Tylos glue at all to stick it to the eye and have it stay there. And then you really want to make sure that your eyeball pupils stay circular. And now I add them in the center of the eye and you can add them anywhere you want. If you want your ladybug to be looking up to the left or down to the right, you can add them anywhere. I just think it looks nice and cute if they're right in the center. And then once you have your pupils where you want them, go ahead and wipe your hands off again because we are going to be using a little bit more white for a little bit of like a shine in the eyeballs. Now for the little shine to your eyeballs, you want to make sure that the little white pieces are very small. If they're too big, they will look awkward on your ladybug's face. So really tiny ball, and then you just want to put it up right where you want your glare to be. For me, I prefer putting it right at the top of the pupil, probably around like the two o'clock section and right at the top, almost on the edge of the white and black. You can put that glare anywhere, that's just where I find I put the glare on most of my figurines. And then once you have your head just how you want it, you're going to go ahead and put a little bit of Tylos glue on the back of your head as well as the toothpick, and you're just going to go ahead and push it onto the body. You want to make sure that when you're putting the head on, you're sliding it on 
to the body from the table. You want to make sure that the head is not elevated in any way. So now we're going to go ahead and create the antenna. And for this, I roll out two equal length logs of black and white fondant. Now you can use any colors for your antenna, but for this ladybug, I feel it looks best in black and white. So you're going to go ahead and roll them together. And you're just going to roll and twist, roll and twist to make sure that you're keeping that spiral. And the more that you roll and twist and roll and twist, the more that your two logs will become one log. You really want it to look uniform, you don't want it to look like it's two pieces stuck together. So once you feel like your antenna is one uniform log, you're going to go ahead and cut two equal pieces for the antenna. You don't need super long pieces because you will be tapering off the end of one of the antenna pieces. So just go ahead and taper one end. You want to make sure that one end is pointy and one end is flat. The flat end will be the end that's sitting on top of your head supporting the rest of the antenna. So once you feel like you have a good length for your antenna, you're going to go ahead and take the pointed end and you're just going to roll it inwards. You can roll it in as many times as you want, but I feel like one roll is good enough. And then once you have your shape where you want it, you're going to go ahead and take a floral wire with a little bit of Tylos glue on the end and you're going to go ahead and insert that as far as you can into your antenna. You want to make sure that that antenna has a lot of support because you don't want it to break off. And then once you have your antenna wire in there, just go ahead and cut off the excess wire. You want to leave about a half inch to an inch of wire so that it has something to support itself when you stick it into the head. And then go ahead and make your second antenna the exact same way you made your first. Now it's really important that after you create your antenna that you set them aside to dry for at least a few hours before you put them on your ladybug. This is because you don't want the tips of the antennas that you just formed to droop in any way. You want them to stay the same shape that they are. So just go ahead and dry them out. If you don't have a lot of time to wait around, you can also put them in the oven for about 15 minutes at 125 degrees. So now we're going to go ahead and attach our antenna to the ladybugs. So just use a tiny, tiny bit of Tylos glue on the end of your wire and you're going to go ahead and stick it into the top of the head. Now you can put the antenna anywhere you want, but I like to put them a little bit closer to the middle. And you're going to go ahead and do the same thing with your other one. Tiny, tiny bit of Tylos glue. Again, if you add too much, it will squish out the sides and it will definitely ruin the look of your entire piece. So really be careful how much glue you add. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching.